Yeah, we had a lot of good questions coming in. That's good. So uh, first one I see here was uh, in a federated workflow, do you recommend alignments and the roadway edges of payment being the same DGM file or should you even federate that right into separate ones? And uh, yeah, we would probably lean toward having those both in the same DGN since you know the edges of payment are dependent on that centerline geometry. You're not going to really be editing one without editing the other. So yeah, we would recommend uh, keeping that in the same DGN if they're that related. The federation, again, is if you're having different designers work on different portions. That's probably the main reason you might want to do that. So I hope that uh, answered your question there. So, okay, another question about um, changes to the name boundary, uh, moving the reference in the drawing model. When the name boundary is created, uh, the save view is taken and it's referenced into the, the drawing model. Um, so really, we're still, um, you know, most of the design that you do where you're ruling uh, alignments to other alignments, you're, you're ruling corridors to alignments, a lot of design is dynamic. The drawing production, by attaching that save view, it is kind of a static look into the uh, design model. And so, you know, if there are changes to the geometry after the name boundaries are correct, we don't, uh, the name boundaries currently are not ruled to the geometry like other things are ruled. So um, if there's enough change in the geometry, then you might have to recut some name boundaries to take into account the changes. Okay, next question. This is a good one about um, element annotation label of tools behave like pen and pencil mode back in inroads. That's an old school question there. Talking about pen and pencil was a way to uh, have stuff be permanent or temporary. Um, but the way that an annotation now is ruled to the alignment, maybe we don't need it to be temporary or permanent. Maybe we don't have to get rid of it because if it stays ruled, uh, to the alignments, then it's it's going to be updated the next time that DGN is loaded and the alignment refreshes. We have those white space management tools now, which allows our annotation to kind of react to the changes of the alignment. It can stay relative, or it can stay in the permanent position it was placed, or it can stay relative to the alignment. Um, so yeah, maybe some of the the way we're doing annotation now, we don't need the pen and pencil much anymore. And I got to say that the roots of pen and pencil and right lock were a performance issue. We used to have write lock back in inroads that wouldn't write stuff permanently to the DGN, and I was just trying to save speed, but we're not really having that many performance issues with a lot of graphics uh, in ORD. Anyway, that was a good question. Had another question here about um, if standards are copied in uh, to the design model, what happens when changes are made back in those standards uh, DGN libs? And that that is a good question there, and it can be handled easily. If I go to the model in my open row standards and I right click, I can update standards from DGN libs. So we do recognize that the DGN libs may change. Standards, I guess, are always evolving as much as we don't want them to be. But what this will do, this update standards from DGN lib, you know that I talked about all the standards that that terrain needs are copied into the file. So what happens if those standards change? Well, just like the program is smart enough to know which standards to go and pull into the file, it uses that same logic when you run update standards from DGN lib here, and it goes those same standards that it needs. It goes and it rereads the DGN and it, you know, it syncs them. It makes sure that the standards in this DGN are matching what was from the source uh, DGN libs. Yeah, and that kind of answers uh, another question I saw come in. The easiest way to push updates to an annotation group that use, it's used in multiple files. Okay, let me answer that. When there is a change to annotation groups, you'll do what we just showed there, and that is update standards from DGN lib. Uh, but the person who asked the question said, what about if it's happening on multiple files? And I do want to kind of tease you a little bit with what we've seen that's upcoming in our next release, what's coming in the 10.11 release that's uh, due out this summer. In you see portions of it now. If you go to the civil tools here, uh, we have this civil feature remapper. And right now, that's that's a pretty simple tool, but they're adding to that tool. And one thing they're going to do is they're going to allow you to go and change 
uh, all the elements in the current DGN, if you need to update those elements to a new uh, feature definition, they're going to add that ability in there. There's going to be a bulk uh, feature edit tool, which will allow you to you know, grab a bunch of feature definitions and edit them at the same time. And what they're doing with those tools, like the feature remapper, is they're allowing you to run it inside the, the platform has the batch tool. And you can run those uh, inside the batch tool. If you need to change an annotation definition on a bunch of elements at the same time, that feature remapper is going to allow you to do that with all the elements in a DGN. Or if you need to go and scan all of your DGNs in a project, then uh, they've made sure that those commands also run off a key in so that you can use the batch uh, processing tool here in the platform. Can you describe the use of the create terrain model from design meshes? Okay, that is kind of a new tool here, terrain, create terrain model from design mesh. It's kind of a newer tool and it's a really, uh, really powerful tool in that, you know, I can create a terrain right now if I just do terrain from element and I grab the corridor. If I just grab the corridor handle, it'll create a terrain from the, the top mesh of that corridor. But what if I'm doing more of a complex design. I have a corridor that intersects with another corridor, and I did some surface template modeling, so I have some surface template meshes in there. Those are not corridor meshes, so how do I create a good terrain out of that? Well, this uh, create terrain model from design meshes allows you, it looks at the 3D meshes that the corridors create, that the surface templates create, or if I've created a terrain just kind of manually from doing work, with elements, with 3D elements in there. If as long as I give those terrains a design feature definition, there's a type, you can call them design, you can call them existing. As long as they're design type feature definitions, it's going to create, it's going to go and it's going to look at every single design mesh in the current DGN and it's going to create a terrain from it. Uh, so that, yeah, that is kind of a new powerful tool there. Yeah, there was uh, one tool here. How would you go about manually moving annotations such as uh, curve boxes if they're overlapping with other elements? Um, so that is, um, let me switch back over to where I did some annotation and show that. This, uh, the white space management, if you haven't seen that, that was new in this uh, 2021 R2, the latest 1010 release. Uh, we call it white space management. That is a powerful tool I want to make sure everybody's aware of. Let me go to the um, drawing where I had that. Let's click on an annotation. Let's see. Okay. So the annotations that we create have this new relocation management um, function here. And if I need to move so we have a couple of different options of location, and, and we'll um, we'll show this later when we get more into the drawing production answer hour. But we have uh, location options for this annotation, and we can default means just, um, I guess, stay where it is. But we have relative, which means if this alignment moves. So what is going to happen is if this alignment moves, and I have done some manual movement of my annotation. So let's say I'm, it clashed with this and I moved it over a little bit then when this alignment moves, default is going to reset it back to its original location from its annotation group. Uh, if I choose relative, then it's going to stay in its position relative to the alignment. It's going to move with the alignment. And if it stays fixed, that means it's just going to record the X, Y of its location, and it's going to stay put there no matter where the alignment is moving there. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.